Hi, I'm Tom Hogue, the Secure Data Center Solution Manager. And I have here Bart McLaughlin, the Secure Data Center Solutions Architect. I recently created a solution overview video describing the business value proposition of the Secure Data Center Solution Portfolio. Our latest Cisco validated design that we just completed titled Threat Management with Next Generation IPS shows how to integrate our next generation IPS appliances into the data center. Each of these Cisco validated designs provide a step-by-step -step guidance on how to mitigate today's threats using Cisco's before, during, and after security model, which I describe in the overview video. Now, Bart, thank you for taking the time to help us understand some of the technical challenges you had to overcome during the validation process. One of the biggest challenges with integrating security appliances into a scalable data center design is handling asynchronous traffic flows. How does our solution design address these challenge? Well, Tom, uh, we had a bunch of people do a brainstorming session in our, uh, some of our lead architects and engineers to address the different scenarios uh, that are possible to address this problem. And one of the top solutions that came out of that was using a context pair. Now first we had to connect the devices using dedicated interfaces such that each ASA in the cluster needs to directly connect to a firepower appliance one-to-one -one, forming a set. Then the two contexts, one north and one south, sandwich the IPS services into the ASA cluster. Using this pair of contexts allows the ASA cluster to correct any asynchronous flows, both inbound and outbound, forwarding packets over the cluster control link back to the flow-owning ASA firepower set. Interesting. So as the data center throughput needs to scale, you're saying you just add more ASA and firepower sets to the cluster, so this means there's no need to change the design? Yes, exactly. That's, that's how the design scales. And through the ability to also segment the data center into separate secure enclaves, we're able to use VLANs as we did in the secure enclave architecture guide. So by using the virtual switch feature in the firepower plants, we can bridge multiple enclave segments through that ASA firepower set in the cluster. So this is a depiction of a single enclave in the context pair. It's the same as the previous slide, but adds the VLANs used for enclave one. Now all of these images are also available in our implementation guides, so don't worry too much about the rest of the details in this slide. The VLANs are connected from the ASA to the firepower plants across the port channel using sub interfaces. In our validation, we use two 10 gig links for this port channel to connect the devices, which match the scale and capacity that we wanted for the design. On the firepower appliance, a virtual switch is configured for each enclave and interface as the appliance does not yet support port channels at this time. So as customers need to scale, or in other words, add additional zones or enclaves, all they need to do is to configure additional contexts and add additional virtual switches. Yes, that's true. So all you have is that initial setup and then the adding of additional enclaves when you want to scale and grow. Now on our validation, we configured three enclaves and we also provided guidance on how to scale both the VLANs and the IP addressing up to 100 enclaves as we did in that secure architecture guide for enclaves. Each VLAN flows over that same port channel and the use of the port channel is required because this ASA cluster is in span cluster interface mode as we implemented in our earlier designs following our CVD best practices guide. In the firepower appliances, these configurations must be made separately on each appliance. To help keep things straight, we used a simple naming scheme that included both the enclave name and the port to match the interfaces up. And all of this is thoroughly documented on our implementation guide, Tom. Now, high availability is very important in the data center and using virtualized switches does not allow for fell open design when using different VLANs on a trunk port channel. Can you explain how the EEM link monitoring works to detect failures and speed convergence? Sure, Tom. So maybe a step back is that one of the failure scenarios that we threw at this design during the proof of concept uncovered a weakness of how long that port channel timer takes to expire and bring the ASA firepower set out of the cluster if the appliance fails. So to speed up this detection, we used additional copper interfaces on the firepower appliance and connected them to the Nexus switches. Then we established a fabric enabled port channel across them and used LACP to monitor the health of that firepower appliance. On the appliance, we set up those interfaces as an inline pair, but not to fail open. So now if the firepower appliance fails or goes into kernel panic or for some other reason can't forward packets, the port channel across the nexus switches is detected as going down. And then using the embedded event monitoring scripts in those 7Ks, 
we're able to trigger a shutdown of the cluster control links. So our testing showed that they had almost no packet loss during a failure scenario versus a long black holing we initially saw with that port channel when you waited for the ASA to detect that failure. Now, Bart, in, in previous designs, we had the Cisco IPS blades embedded in the ASA chassis, right? How does this design compare to the previous designs when the IPS blades were embedded? Well, the cool thing is, is the design basically stays the same. So we have architectural consistency for our customers. Whether they use those embedded blades or the ASA and uh, the appliances or the firepower, the physical appliances, now our customers can choose what product they want to match for, for the needs of their scale and performance of their business. So the architecture uh, should remain consistent as new products and features are released, giving customers investment protection. Exactly. Now, Bart, I want to thank you for all the great work you've done. I know creating a Cisco validated design is, is hard work and it takes a lot of time. So, yeah. so folks, to get your hands on all this great stuff, and if you want to know more, please check us out on the design zone on Cisco.com. And we'll be seeing you. Be seeing you.